Hello everyone, this is Jude from EasyTex. In this video, I'll be talking about the six key things to check for before performing a free upgrade to Windows 10. About three months ago, I released a video on how to perform a free upgrade from Windows 7 and 8.1 to Windows 10. I really appreciate that a good number of people have found this video useful. I got a number of comments about different challenges people face during this upgrade and I decided to make this video to help minimize the chances of experiencing any challenges during the upgrade and ensuring you get an activated, functional and free Windows 10. So let's get to it. The first thing is to check that your Windows 7 or 8.1 is activated and genuine. To do that in your Windows 7, you go to your computer and click on System Properties, then scroll down and verify that it says Windows is activated and that you can see the genuine Microsoft software logo on the right end of the window. The same process applies to Windows 8.1 as well. I consider this very important because if you upgrade from an unlicensed Windows 7 or 8.1, you will definitely end up with an unlicensed Windows 10. The second thing is to ensure that your PC has been connected to the internet at least once since after it was activated. This is especially important if you begin with a clean Windows 7 or 8.1 installation and then try to upgrade to Windows 10. You need to ensure that you connect to the internet at least once before attempting the free upgrade. This is because you get your free Windows 10 digital license from Microsoft only after an online verification of your Windows 7 or 8.1 with the Microsoft servers. Now installing and activating Windows 7 or 8.1 offline and attempting a free upgrade to Windows 10 offline as well, we end up with an unlicensed Windows 10. Now to be fully certain that your Windows 7 or 8.1 activation has been acknowledged by Microsoft, try running Windows Update before starting the upgrade. The third thing is to check that your PC meets the actual system requirements for running Windows 10. And by that I'm talking about the processor, the RAM, the hard disk space, the graphic card and the display. Now let's get the last two requirements out of the way. If you are already running Windows 7 or 8.1 effectively on your PC, you most likely don't need to worry about the graphic card requirement or the display resolution requirement. This is because DirectX 9 graphic card is equally a requirement for Windows 7 and Windows 8.1. And a minimum display resolution requirement of 800 by 600 pixels has been a requirement for all Windows from Windows XP which was released in 2001 to the most recent edition of Windows. So you are most likely to go on these two requirements. Now let's get to the more trivial requirements hard disk space. Microsoft recommends a minimum of 16GB disk space for a 32-bit system and 20GB for a 64-bit system. Now this could well be the case in theory, assuming all you have on your disk is a running Windows 10. However, I compared the disk usage on two different laptops, HP EliteBook 8540W Core i7 and an Acer Aspire 5738Z Intel Pentium. Beginning with a fresh installation of Windows 7 Pro Edition 64-bit on both laptops and upgrading to Windows 10 Pro without installing any applications, I realized they both had significantly different disk space usage. The disk usage on the EliteBook was about 49GB, while on the Acer was just about 30GB. So obviously, disk usage varies from PC to PC, so I would recommend at least 35 gigabyte disk space for Windows 10 64-bit edition and 24 gigabyte disk space for a 32-bit edition. Now for the RAM requirement, the recommendation by Microsoft is a minimum of 1 gigabyte RAM for a 32-bit system and 2 gigabytes RAM for a 64-bit system. But it goes without saying that the system performance 
will be significantly slow using these RAM sizes. For effective performance, I will recommend doubling on this requirement. So a 4GB RAM for a 64-bit system and a 2GB RAM for a 32-bit system. Finally, the processor. This, in my opinion, is the most trivial system requirement for upgrading to Windows 10. Microsoft recommends a minimum of 1 GHz. I definitely wouldn't upgrade to Windows 10 if I'm running a 1 GHz processor. The reason is simple. First, the upgrade process will be daunting due to processing delays. And secondly, the overall performance of the PC after the upgrade will be super slow. For instance, when you click the Windows Start icon, you could wait for maybe 3 seconds before it pulls up. Not to talk about what happens when you begin to run multiple applications. The fourth thing to do is to create your own recovery media and backup. Now the default configuration of Windows 10 during the upgrade allows you to keep all your files and programs after the upgrade. But it's always good to have a backup and recovery media before performing any form of system upgrade. The fifth thing is to record your software keys. Again, like the fourth point, it's true that Windows will preserve your applications and software after the upgrade, but some applications might require specific configuration with Windows 10. Hence, you might need to reinstall such applications, in which case you will need the product key. So it's a good idea to record your keys and licenses before performing the upgrade. The sixth and final thing is to check what edition of Windows 10 you get after the upgrade. Now the good news about this is that every edition of Windows 7 and 8.1 has a corresponding edition of Windows 10 you can get for free. Hence you may not even need to worry about this requirement as Windows decide by default what edition of Windows 10 you get after the upgrade. But to give you a heads up on that, here are the corresponding editions of Windows 10 you get after the upgrade depending on what edition of Windows 7 or 8.1 you are previously running. And as bonus, for those who experience stalled installations, by that I mean the installation that gets stuck in a certain process and wouldn't get past it for a long period of time. I have created an installation media with both 32-bit and 64-bit operating systems. The link to the download is in the description section below. Download the entire folder to your PC and run the setup file following the same instructions in the video. This folder is approximately 8GB in size, hence the download might take a while depending on the network speed. However, the installation is certainly faster and more reliable through this method. If you have already upgraded to Windows 10, you may want to check my video on the 8 key things to check after upgrading to Windows 10. And as usual, if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button for updates on future videos. This means a lot to me. Thanks again for watching and see you soon.